sync. With January approaching, there's bound to be a lot of people trying Veganuary, um, which is where you go vegan for the month of January, and half a year on most people um, are still vegan after that. And it's a fantastic campaign, um, but not that you need a time of the year to make a change to better your health, the environment, uh, wildlife. Uh, but you know, uh, I thought I'd make it easier with some top tips. Now, I'm not quite a vegan master, um, but when I first went vegan, I did it with my girlfriend at the time, and we didn't know any other vegans, and it made it really difficult when we were just starting out, and so, you know, I thought I would help other people avoid that situation. Now, my first tip is to join a bunch of relevant uh, vegan groups on Facebook. Here in the UK, we have Vegan Brits, UK Vegan, 100% uh, Vegan Products UK. Uh, for a more global reach, there's a really good group uh, called One Billion Vegans, which has a really great community. There's also local vegan groups that you can join on Facebook. You should like your local animal save group um, on Instagram, follow some vegan accounts on YouTube, find some good vegan YouTubers and subscribe to them, like this one. <laughs> It will really help you feel like you're not alone because there's loads of vegans, it's just so we don't often bump into each other. It took me about a year, maybe, to just coincidentally bump into another vegan. When you first go vegan, your friends and your family are going to ask you a ton of questions and so my second tip is to get clued up. Learn the common arguments that non-vegans like to give, like protein and humanely slaughtered, um, and learn the appropriate responses to them. The more homework you do, the better equipped you're going to be to discuss these topics with people who ask you about them and explain why you are boycotting these industries. My third tip is super easy. Um, when you're checking if something is vegan on the back of the packet, just look for the writing in bold. It'll help you identify if there are eggs or milk in seemingly vegan products. Some companies mark their food as vegan friendly, but not every company is that considerate. You'll quickly become a black belt in reading labels. My fourth tip is to download some vegan apps onto your phone. If you drink often, there's an app called Veggie Beers, um, which lets you know uh, by crossing multiple sources if your drink has been filtered through uh, Isinglass, which is a fish bladder. I know, it's gross, it's nothing sacred. There's also an app called Happy Cow, where you can put on filters to check local places um, to find vegan restaurants, uh, maybe vegetarian restaurants, or just places with a good veggie option. It'll also show you opening times and where the place is located on a map relative to you. It's super, super useful when you're still learning which places you can eat at. Which leads me to my fifth tip, which is learn some staple foods. Often when you're out and about, it can be difficult to find foods that you can just grab on the go. Learn some staple foods at your supermarket that you can just eat on the go and avoid being stuck without food. Say, for example, most hummus and falafel wraps at supermarkets are vegan, though Sainsbury's isn't. Shame on you, Sainsbury's. Shame on you. Most ready salted, salt and vinegar, or prawn cocktail crisps, or sometimes barbecue or bacon flavoured crisps are vegan and so you'll be able to find at least one of them. A lot of people say that they would miss cheese too much if they went vegan and so here's my sixth tip to help with that. I'm sorry to tell you this um, but it's totally worth it. You're going to have to go maybe two months cold turkey with cheese. No cheese, no vegan cheese, nothing cheese flavoured but then go out buy yourself some nutritional yeast and some vegan cheese. Those two months will help you get over your casomorphine addiction and will also help you somewhat forget what cow's cheese tastes like. And so once you then later try some vegan cheeses, you'll be able to enjoy them for their flavour and not just to satisfy a casomorphine addiction. My seventh tip is to remember that you always have more to learn and that your taste buds are going to change. For example, uh, when you've just gone vegan, you might not have yet found a plant milk that you're going to like, but don't just assume that you're going to hate all of them. Say, I really dislike some soy milks, but some are delicious, um, and rice milk is one of the best things I've ever tasted, and your taste buds are going to change for sure. For example, when I first went vegan, I was really turned off by the idea of kale, but now it's one of my favourite foods. 
as stereotypical as that sounds. I've never thought that broccoli or kidney beans were gross, but I was never really that much into them. But now that some of my favorite foods, I actually get excited to eat them. My eighth tip kind of ties into my last one. It's to remember that meat substitutes are just that. They're substitutes. It's not going to be exactly the same as animal flesh, but I mean, you're vegan now, you don't want to eat that. I've seen a few people go into trying mock meats and they were quite disappointed when they ate them because they were forgetting that they are just substitutes. Say for example, when we were filming Spilling the Soybeans on Veganism, um, Naomi tried a seitan chicken burger and was really disappointed by it because she expected it to be exactly the same as a chicken. We also discovered a couple weeks later that she's a little bit uh, gluten intolerant, so seitan was probably the worst thing that she could possibly have eaten. But yeah, they tend to get the taste pretty spot on, but the texture is what a lot of mock meats fail to get. My ninth tip is to eat well. Everybody knows somebody whose aunties, sisters, daughter's boyfriend tried veganism for a week and it made them ill. I never really believe people when they tell me this, but if it is true, it's because they're just eating iceberg lettuce and Oreos for a week and then they're blaming veganism that they're ill. Either that or they were getting ill anyway and then blamed veganism for them being ill, for them catching a cold. Now I've been vegan for just under two years and I've only been ill twice to the point where it is weird if I get sick. And so as long as you're eating well, you're going to be fine. You should watch some food holes on YouTube from channels like Cheap Plays Vegan. I plan on doing some in the future, um, but it will show you what you can buy. Finally, it's time for my 10th and final tip. Being vegan is a whole lot easier when you focus on the victims of animal agriculture and not what you want personally. A lot of people who used to be vegan um, say that they stopped living vegan because oh, just, they just love chicken or they just love cheese too much but that's completely the wrong way to look at it. If you ever feel like you're struggling with being vegan just remind yourself why you were doing it and why it's so important. Watch maybe a vegan documentary or some vegan youtubers or maybe read an article. What you were doing is so important and you should remember that. Right, well, I think I'll leave that there. If you agreed with me, if you disagreed with me, um, or if you have some tips uh, of your own, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're more sorted than that, you can leave me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But yeah, this has been a Broke Early video, and I'll talk to you next time.